Now that we understand that indirect taxes are going to have an effect on the supply curve, we need to look at two different types of indirect taxes and see how they're going to affect the supply curve differently. Our two types is what's called an ad valorem tax, and again, that's Latin just for adding value, and that is uh, what we call a percentage tax, so it's going to be 10%. So whatever the price is, you then add 10% to that price. This basically, every sales tax in the United States is going to be an ad valorem tax. A specific tax is what we used in the past example, where it's a fixed amount, so instead of 10%, maybe it's just 10 cents. Doesn't matter if the price is a dollar or $10, it gets increased by just one fixed amount, 10 cents. If we look at the supply schedule, what we can see is for the same quantity supplied, here's our original price that is needed to incentivize or motivate me to produce the corresponding quantity. Well, the effect that these two are going to have would look like this. With a specific tax, if it would take $1, or a price of $1, to get me to make one, now it's going to take a price of $1.10. Because with a 10 cent tax, specific tax, uh, with a 10 cent tax, I know that 10 cents, that extra 10 cents is going to go to the government, leaving me with the original dollar that I required. Likewise, with two, three, or four dollars, um, if it's going to take a price of four dollars to motivate me to make four, well then, I'm going to increase the price to four dollars and ten cents, because for each of those, remember, this would be total revenue of four times four, sixteen. So this would be four times four, ten, so sixteen and forty. But that forty extra cents is going to get sent to the government. So it goes back to the original sixteen that I need. With an ad valorem tax, you'll see that it's gonna have a different effect. Starting with the price of one, we see it actually ends up the same here because 10% of one is 10 cents. So the price increases to $1.10. But at a price of two, now 10% of $2 is 20 cents. So instead of it being 210, it's 220. And here it's 330 and 340. So we see that with the ad valorem tax, the higher the price gets, the bigger effect the tax is going to have. That is, at a higher price for, the ad valorem tax raises price by 40 cents, versus at a price of one, the ad valorem price raised the, uh, raised the price by 10 cents. When we diagram this with the specific tax, what we see is that the curve shifts up by the amount of the specific tax. So any difference between the original curve that's in black and the supply curve with the specific tax that's in green, any distance there should be equal to 10 cents. With an ad valorem tax, we're gonna have a different effect. Our first shift at a dollar, it's still gonna go up to a dollar 10. But when we go over to $2, instead of it being a shift of 10 cents, now it's gonna be 10 cents plus 10 cents here to 220. And over at $3, it's gonna not be a shift of 20 cents, but instead it's gonna be a shift of 30 cents. So we'll see that shift, we'll see it move by more and more and more the further up the supply curve we go. So the effect of this is going to be not a shift of the supply curve, but in fact what will happen is that the supply curve will become more steep all along its length. So this would be supply with an ad valorem tax. Next, we need to look at the effect that a specific or an ad valorem tax will have on the equilibrium inside of the market. So if we start with a specific tax here, and we're going to have it shift by the width of my ruler, however much that is. So this is going to be supply with tax. What we're going to see is that equilibrium price and quantity are going to move up the demand curve, so the law of demand is going to be in effect, and we're going to see a higher price, this is price with tax, and a lower quantity with tax. With an ad valorem tax, we're going to see a different effect. Again, let's pretend it's going to shift by the width of my ruler, but remember, because it's an ad valorem tax, it's also going to be steeper. 
So what we should see is that the change, the change in price and quantity should be more significant, i.e. the amount that we moved up the demand curve there should be greater than the amount we moved up the demand curve there. So what we should see is that quantity after the tax and price after the tax should change by greater amounts, i.e. we should see a greater uh, drop in qu equilibrium quantity and a, a bigger increase also in equilibrium price after the ad valorem tax. This is going to be especially true the higher and the higher the price is. So again, imagine if we were way up here, the gap between supply and supply tax is going to be much larger. So that means we're going to move up the demand curve more. This becomes even more true the higher the price is. So if the demand curve begins up here, you would notice that the amount that it moves up the demand curve would, even, would be even greater. So the higher and the higher price is, the greater and greater effect that the ad valorem tax is going to have on equilibrium price and quantity. This wouldn't hold true on a specific tax. No matter where the demand curve is, even if we have a much higher price, in absolute terms, but not percentage terms, you would see that quantity and price would change by the same amount, whether the change occurred on this demand curve or a demand curve further to the right or further to the left. No matter what, they would all be the same.